Today, CDC is updating our guidance for fully vaccinated people. Anyone who is fully vaccinated can participate in indoor and outdoor activities, large or small, without wearing a mask or physical distancing. If you are fully vaccinated, you can start doing the things that you had stopped doing because of the pandemic. We have all longed for this moment. Good evening, black people and all allies fighting for black liberation, black prosperity and black joy. I'm Charles Blow and welcome to Prime. In a major announcement, the CDC today issued surprising new guidance. If you are fully vaccinated, you can ditch the mask and social distancing. Although masks will still be required in crowded indoor settings like planes, trains and buses, CDC Director uh, Rochelle Walensky described today's announcement as a moment we've all longed for. That may be true, but are we all able to celebrate? When it comes to black people, we're more likely to contract the virus, to be hospitalized for it, and to die from it. But according to a report by the Kaiser Family Foundation, when it comes to those who have received at least one vaccine dose, black Americans are at the bottom of the list. Only 27% have received a dose, compared to 50% of Asians and 40% of whites. How much of this is because black people are hesitant? and how much of it is because they lack access. When you look at places like DC, black people have received 31% of vaccinations while they make up 55% of the cases and 70% of the deaths and 43% of the total population. So while others may be celebrating today, a lot of us are still waiting. Joining me now to discuss is the chief medical editor of BNC, Dr. Corey Abair. Dr. Abair, how are you? Ooh, I'm, I'm boiling. I'm boiling today with this nonsense that came out. <laughs> well, well, President Biden uh, spoke today after the guidelines came out. I want you to take a listen to what he said, and we'll talk right after. If you're vaccinated, you can be around the vaccinated or unvaccinated people. But if you're not vaccinated or not fully vaccinated, you should wear a mask for your own protection or the protection of other unvaccinated people. Dr. Abair, you said you're boiling about what happened today. Tell us what upset you about it. Okay, so this is the deal. This is Black News Channel. So we have a unique opportunity with the unique audience to make sure that we get all the facts and give them to us because we have to take care of us. So what has happened here is that as all, you, all of us know, we have literally seen this disease decimate us, right? Now, we are going to take advice and guidance from the country that same advice and guidance from that country that made it so that we didn't have access to health care for the last 100 years. We didn't have access to vaccines at the appropriate time for the last 14 months and the information that we needed, we didn't get in our communities. We had disinformation campaigns against us from all types of places. So at this point, we can't just limp across the finish line. We have to lean at the tape. We have to finish strong. And what we need to remember is that we're not getting vaccinated. So What's going to happen here is we say that we can have masks if you go on buses, trains, and whatever. The point, though, is that if you can wear no mask when you're vaccinated, who is going to check if you're vaccinated or not? They have brothers right now on 42nd Street and, and, and everybody out there selling fake vaccination cards. And what I think is going to happen is that they want people to get vaccinated thinking that this vaccination is your key to vacation. That's what they want people to think. But what's going to happen is the people that have not been vaccinated, Charles, they're not about to just go get vaccinated now because nobody's going to check if they got vaccinated for them to do the things they wanted to do. So now if you're on the fence, what's going to so happen? You, you're going to say, I don't need it. Are you saying that this action actually disincentivizes black people from getting vaccinated? Or people in general? Will. I think it will. And the reason why is because you know when you have a job, right? And you have a boss that makes that is sure that you get there at eight o'clock. And if you don't, you get fired. You're there at eight o'clock. But you have a boss that says you can come at eight fifteen, you come at eight twenty, right? So if you know right now and you have not moved to get this vaccination in all these months, you saying right now, I'm gonna go get this vaccination so I don't have to wear a mask, but nobody's gonna check. 
it's not black people. It's just going to be people that have, because have, if you're on the fence, you would have already gotten it. And 20% of people are never going to get it. So I think that this is too soon, Charles. It's too soon because black people, we still have 35,000 cases a day of this disease. And we can't just think about it in general population. We have to think about it. How does this affect the people that have been disenfranchised from health care since its inception? So at this point, I have to so, take all the facts and, ma and make a decision. And my decision is I want, I want black folks to still wear their masks. I think it's important. So if this, these guidelines today send these numbers in the wrong direction, do you think that that will force the CDC to roll back these guidelines? Do you think that this is probably a temporary measure if, as you say, it, it actually spreads the virus rather than controlling it and getting more people to convince to be vaccinated? Well, what, what I'm saying is, is this. I think that in, in certain parts of the country right now, we know that this, these are guidelines. These are not laws that they came up with. So even New York at some points now is saying that they may or may not um, ease the mask guidelines. And at this point, they're saying that they're not going to ease the mask guidelines, according to the CDC. Now, each state, each country, I mean, e each part of the country, each municipality can make their own decisions. Each private company can make their own decisions. But I think that I don't know that this is going to make the numbers just go up. But what I am concerned about is that our numbers won't go down. I want our numbers to be zero, and we just can't take things that people just tell us to say that, wow, we should just do everything that everybody else is doing because we didn't get affected like everybody else got affected. So we can't do the things that everybody is telling us to do to get us out of this hole. Yes. Biden also said today that we have 80,000 vaccine locations and 90 percent of Americans live within five miles of one of those locations. Is that true for black people or is that just a general number for everybody? That number is true at this point, but it wasn't true three months ago. All right. And so when the when the push for vaccines uh, first started, that those numbers weren't even close to that. And I really give Biden and the CDC and the FDA all the kudos for getting to this point and getting the getting us to the place where we actually have the vaccines. I mean, they, uh, kudos to them. But the point is that we know that public health is a four legged stool, Charles. It is public outcry. It's money. It's politics and science. Science should be the number one leg on that stool, but most of the time it's a number three or four. And we have to remember that the CDC got a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure to move these guidelines to, in this way, because 16 days ago, they just told you that they wanted you to wear the mask, you know, any place indoors, just not outdoors. So, you know, this is, this is a lot they of got stuff pressure going on from here. Him. I think we get, we get pressure from, from the politics of it as well as the economics of it. So we, we have to make sure that we keep these things in check, you know, because it, it, can, it can totally get out of hand. We've had guidelines all over the place. And I think that in certain places, if you're in North Dakota, if you're in Wyoming, sure, you don't need to wear a mask. But if you're in downtown Manhattan with 500,000 people around you with a mutant from, uh, from India that has decimated that country with 12 different mutations, one being South African, one being Brazilian, two being California that destroyed the whole issue of Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's in that state, this mutation that is causing all those problems in India, and we're sure not to call it the Indian mutation because that is culturally inappropriate, we have to remember that that's around, that's in Michigan. It's not outside of the United States, it's here. So we have to be careful. But the vaccines now, don't get me wrong, the vaccines work, Charles, the vaccines work. But is this going to push people to get them or say, I don't have to worry about it because nobody's gonna check? Do you believe that there is a danger in the long run that we will just end up with a kind of racial inequality of vaccine that will be kind of chronic? Um, I think that that will be a continuation of the chronicity of us having issue with the medical establishment. And this, it will be no different than any other thing. The social determinants of health, where we live, where we love, where we work and where we play, these determine how we have our outcomes. And where we live, where we love, where we work and we play are totally different than, Afri than the white Americans. And what I will say to you is that we, I don't even like to call them health disparities because disparities mean things are just different. 
I like to call it like I see it. We have to call it health inequities. Oh, the, the, the weather in Miami is, is, has a disparity between the weather in Alaska, but that doesn't mean either one of them are bad. So we have to call it like we see it. Words mean everything. These are health inequities, and we have to deal with different populations the way that they need to be dealt with. We can't have a one-size-fit-all approach to any health condition because we're not equal in our application and our access to health care across this country, point blank. BNC's own Dr. Corey Aber, thank you so much for your expertise tonight, sir. I really appreciate it. A white congresswoman threatens a woman of color again. We'll get into that one next. You're watching Prime on BNC.